Welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. I think everyone's kind of done with Nerf Limited. People are sick of having to put up with overpriced, oversized blasters. Some of them work the way they're supposed to. Some of them just simply don't. The Gallerhorn was a pretty good one. The frickin' the Needler was a disaster because it's not even a limited thing. I can look to my left and see a Needler sitting over there on the shelf. And if I look on Amazon, I will still see that exact same Needler that came out in 2022 for $90. Yeah, but as I reach into my inventory, I realize that there is still a limited blaster that I have yet to get to. I don't know how this thing fit behind my back either. This is the Jinx Fishbones. <laughs> So the Fishbones is a 2023 release out of Hasbro in the Nerf Limited series, making it one of the biggest releases in that series, and honestly, one of the biggest blasters ever made in general. It's almost as big as a Gallarhorn. It's genuinely bigger than the Titan CS50. This blaster is massive, and it makes quite an impression when you have it sitting on a shelf in a room and someone walks into the room their eyes are immediately going to go to this thing. So if you ever wanted a blaster that you can use as a centerpiece, here you go. And like usual, when this blaster came out, not very many people were interested in it, especially because this one doesn't even really do anything new. It is literally a Doomlands Judge. I'm not even joking. This is seriously just a Doomlands Judge reskin. But we'll get to everything in due time. We gotta start with the design. And, uh, yeah, expect me to drop this thing or lose my control over it a few times throughout this video because it is heavy and it is massive and very lopsided. But let's actually talk about the design. I don't know about you guys, but this is just one of the most hilarious looking blasters ever to me. It is unbelievably silly. And I don't think it's really silly in a good way. It's silly in a way that it can't be taken seriously, but it's also not really silly in a way that like a lot of other silly blasters are, where it's just funny to look at. Take the Doomlands Judge. There's no one on the planet that is expected to take this blaster seriously. And they went with it. They made it as ridiculously big and stupid looking as possible because why not? There's absolutely no reason for there to be this much space between the barrels, but they did it because it's hilarious. That's why they did it. It doesn't make sense for anyone to take this blaster seriously, and that was never the intention. This blaster seems to be trying to be one that you're meant to take seriously, but I really can't do that when I look at it, not only because of the general proportions and all these big goofy angles all over it, but mainly just the overpowering derpy shark head thing on the front of it that is just so silly looking that there, there's no way to be intimidated by this thing, even when it does this. It isn't intimidating because of how ridiculous it looks. I know that this blaster was a pre-existing design that was simply modified by the Hasbro designers in order to make it work as a Nerf blaster. My job is to judge the design. It, it's my job. I blame Riot Games for this. But with that said, when it was time for them to actually come and recreate the design of this blaster from the original source material, I will say they did a damn good job. I actually really like the way this thing looks. Like when you actually just sit back and look at it as a blaster and ignore all the goofy shenanigans, it looks really cool. I, I don't know. I really like it. The only thing that I don't really like is the way that it is put together. It is the basic trope of having different pieces of colored plastic simply clipped together in large sections, and there's barely any paint on it. The only paint that this blaster has is this kind of brass buckle thing right here, the League of Legends logo, and the Nerf logo, none of which are on the other side. The buckle I understand, but the other two things... They could have put those here. Let's talk about the ergonomics. This blaster features a main grip, a grenade launcher style stock pad, and a top prime up here. Let's talk about the main grip first. It looks pretty small, but genuinely this blaster is just that big. It is honestly a pretty big grip, and it's a very comfortable one at that. It's really smooth and rounded all the way around. It's got this kind of wrapping on it, similar to what you'd see on a zombie strike blaster. But it does have one issue where you can kind of see in there between the two bits of plastic, and you can see the clips in there. 
I don't know why you can see in there, but you totally can. And it's very, very distracting when you actually look at this blaster, how visible the separate pieces of plastic are. Well, honestly, it is a pretty comfortable grip, even though because it's mounted with a separate section of plastic, it can wobble a little bit if you give it enough force. As for the stock pad thing up here, it looks pretty cool and is actually pretty comfortable to brace against your shoulder. You just rest the blaster on it and then this pad goes against the front of your shoulder, but it is way too short. Look at this travel. That's not nearly long enough for something like this. I end up doing this, having this kind of back pad resting on the back of my stock and just trying to hold on to the blaster like this in order to keep it steady. That works way better than trying to do it like this. To this, it's just cramping on my arm. As for the top prime, it is this big shark fin looking thing right here. If you remember the freaking Nerf Roblox, that stupid red Megadart thing that also had a shark fin for a priming handle, you'll know that that thing sucked. But this thing is actually pretty good as a priming handle because of the way it's oriented. You can easily get your four fingers on top and rest your thumb up here on the back of the fin. And it's actually a really comfortable priming handle. I like this. I like this a lot. So how does this blaster work? Well, it is a cylinder fed revolver. So you load up the cylinder, which is hidden inside the shark mouth. So you don't know how many darts are in until you actually prime the blaster in which you pull this thing back. The mouth opens, you push it forward. You can see the darts inside. And then you pull this big two finger trigger to fire once. And just like the judge, every time you prime it, it rotates the cylinder and puts three darts in front to fire again. And you can do that six times. Let's talk about the trigger and the smoothness of operation. First of all, the prime smoothness. It is actually a pretty nice prime to pull back. Considering it is rotating a big cylinder, just like the Judge, granted it's not as big as the Judge cylinder, but it's still pretty big, it is a very smooth prime. And hitting the forward position has a very satisfying click. It's a really smooth prime, like really smooth. Like you can't even tell what's going on. And you can see that there's actually a piece of aluminum that is holding the priming handle in. Maybe there's one of the few stock Nerf blasters to actually include metal parts in the mechanism out of the box. Who would have thunk it? But after that, you have the trigger. It has no pull whatsoever and is a big two finger trigger that has a really nice snappy pop when you actually pull it in. And yes, the trigger is plenty big enough to be a two finger trigger. And down here, there's really only space for two fingers. If you have bigger hands, your pinky finger might fall off of this or get stuck on this ledge right here. And there's no trigger guard. So there's a pretty good chance that your ring finger might get dragged by the bottom of the main trigger. So that's definitely worth noting. But I do think that this trigger mech works, even though your middle finger does most of the heavy lifting because it's mounted from the the top and your index finger can't do much blah 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 tiny details it's a trigger and it works really well now i want to quickly address the big selling point of this blaster being the opening and closing shark mouth feature on the front you can close both of the pieces of plastic manually and they click pretty satisfyingly when they close as well as when you prime it the opening feature is hilarious i love how the top one just bounces open when it hits the top position i think that's just so funny and adds a little bit of friendly charm to the childish nature of this blaster with two slight drawbacks one of which isn't as bad you can see a little bits of wear and tear on the plastic right there that little part is just from hitting this so that's not very good but the other issue has proven to be rather catastrophic for some people who have got this blaster you can do this yeah the blaster has these two humongous spinning clips on either side of the front of the shell and the top and bottom jaws have these clip holes which you can easily slip the clips into which is how they are secured onto the blaster and that is the only way that they are secured onto the blaster double punch pro nerfer has lost these pieces they're gone he can't find them anywhere and that sucks because that is like the goofiest part of the blaster and the biggest reason why people would want to get it is so that you can do this and have it look like the thing from the freaking game because let's be honest people didn't use the judge competitively in the first place why would they use an even bigger judge that has four less shots than the judge if not to run it around and act like jinx this does help with storage for the blaster slightly but are you really gonna be throwing this in a tub? No, you're not. You're gonna be putting this thing on a shelf if you're going to be using it. There are very, very few people, and I really mean there are very few people, in which having to remove these things so easily is required. There's like one or two people, maybe, that I can think of in my mind that might need something like this. Everyone else, 
This is just an extra thing that can go wrong, which really sucks. Let's see this thing fire. Uh-oh. So what mod potential does the fish bones have? Well, uh, I, I, I want to figure out how to make it shoot this. Because, I mean, it, it seems like it would fit in there pretty well. I don't know about back here with the big fins, but like, like up, up there it would probably work. I, I, I want to figure it out because I feel like that would be really, 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 really awesome being able to hide this giant ass projectile inside of it and then just poof. Yeah. Other than that, I have no idea. When it comes to modding, the fish bones is one of those weird cases where it really does seem like this blaster has a ton of potential, but there's no real cases of mod potential that I can think of off the top of my head besides doing some big, stupid, ridiculous mod like the one that I just advised. Because, let's be honest, look at this. What are you gonna do with this? Why would you run this thing in a nerf war if not being a cosplay piece? I don't really see much mod potential with this blaster. But with all that said, what do I think of the Jinx Fishbones blaster? This blaster is just so ridiculous. It costs way too much money. $170 for this is way too overpriced. Not at all do I think that that is worth this blaster in any possible reasonable stretch of the imagination. A hundred? Sure. A hundred and thirty? Maybe. A hundred and seventy? Unthinkable. But if you are a cosplayer and you wanted something to represent this prop, I think that this is probably one of the best options that you can go for without investing hundreds and hundreds of dollars into a professionally made handmade prop. It is a budget option for a prop that you could very easily run around and pretend to be Jinx using this thing. It's hilarious, it's pretty comfortable, and it's just fun to play with in the long run. Even though I, I kind of wish that this didn't fall off as easily, and a little bit of me wishes that it would close after you pulled the trigger a few seconds after you pulled the trigger or something so that way if you you didn't have to manually close it every time you wanted it to do this but like most nerf limited blasters the average nerfer isn't going to get that much value out of something like this unless you have a very strong personal connection to the original source material it was based upon so with all that said if you do like this blaster and you want to get it i will link it in the description below thank you guys for watching bye <laughs>